Okay guys, so for today's video, I'm gonna get into the importance of bodybuilding training. Even if you're just a power lifter or a strength athlete, or you're just looking to get stronger in general. And first of all, I think it's important that we kind of talk over what constitutes bodybuilding training. I don't think there's a necessary rep scheme, set scheme, or even exercises that would constitute this. I think you can get the job done with as little as five reps, as little as you know lower reps. Then you can go all the way up to 20 reps, 30 reps, things like that. But the main thing that I would say would designate what bodybuilding training is, is the emphasis is on improving your physique, is on growing those muscle groups, targeting them, isolating them, that sort of thing. And I'm gonna get into why I think that's important and why power lifters should kind of embrace more of that training. So for one, you simply can't get as big, you can't get as jacked, you're not gonna get the muscular development from simply focusing on compound lifts. So for most of my career, most of my powerlifting career, all I focused on were compound lifts. I focused on squat, bench, deadlift, the big three, and then whatever I felt would add to those, whatever would further my strength development within those lifts. So maybe rows, maybe barbell rows, maybe even things like back extensions, um, dumbbell bench for bench, things like that. But really, I missed out on a lot of potential progress and gains by just focusing on those compound lifts. Had I sprinkled in some bodybuilding work, uh, there would have been greater strength potential by increasing the muscle size first and foremost. And you're just not gonna get the same muscular development from simply only training compound lifts, especially squat, bench, and deadlift. They have their place. Obviously, we all wanna be stronger. If you're on this channel, you probably your main goal is to get stronger. You wanna get those lifts progressing. You wanna get them as high as possible. So I'm right there with you. That's still my focus particularly on bench and deadlift these days. That's my main focus. I wanna get them stronger. So I let the, the foundation, I let the base of the programming be centered upon those lifts. Like every week I'm doing some kind of heavy deadlift, heavy bench, doing Bulgarian split squats, things like that. But then after that, for the assistance work, this is where I would lean into a more bodybuilding centric approach where you're doing a lot more isolation movements, where you're doing different things. You know, if you want bigger, wider delts, target lateral raises. And don't neglect the rear delts either. The rear delts are also gonna give that wider appearance by, you know, targeting them. So things like face pulls, rear delt flies, my favorite, prone incline rear delt flies. These are all great movements for increasing that shoulder width. If you want bigger arms, you gotta do curls. There's no way around it, guys. The number one way to build the arms up, <coughs> build the biceps up are, is curls. And obviously the triceps constitute about two thirds of the arms, so you gotta hit the push downs, you gotta hit the skull crushers, things like this. The seated dip machine, the, also known as the tricep press down machine, that's a good option. These are all things you can do to pack that mass on. It's, it's gonna pay off. I've almost seen better gains in the last few months of doing this bodybuilding type training as far as muscular development than I did in all those years for going it. So really, I think if you want the look to go with your strength, you gotta focus in on this stuff. It's okay, you know, for my clients, I mix in whatever they have access to. You know, I'll mix in the pack deck, the pack fly machine, the reverse pack fly machine for rear delts. We'll do every rowing variation known to man for lat and upper back development. We'll do shrugs for trap development. We'll do all the curl variations, Hercules curls, incline curls, concentration curls, Zotman curls, all of these. But, but, you know, there's no limit to the exercises I'll put in. Shoulder press machine up here, chest press machine, everything. And we target various rep ranges. And often on the accessory work, I, I specify higher reps. We'll often do like sets of 20, things like that. And I think it just has a huge payoff in terms of that muscular development. And it's, it's, if you wanna get jacked, it's the way to go. You have to add in the isolation movements, the bodybuilding type work, focus on the physique development. Don't focus on the speed of the reps, the cadence. Focus on slowing things down, being a bit more controlled and really focusing on the contraction. Those are the big things when it comes to that. Number two thing, injuries. You're gonna keep injuries at bay with more of this isolation type work. Because quite simply, you can do a lot more of this type of training without getting injured. You can only do so many squats, so much benching, so many deadlifts before you'll get injured. So there, you're limited as far as the volume you can handle there. Often the case is gonna be where you go heavy on those lifts, you do a ton of volume, you'll eventually start to tweak things, you'll feel injuries. Whereas with these isolation type movements, 
you're not going as heavy, they're not as taxing, that you can simply do a lot more of them without suffering the injuries. And I feel like it also helps protect against injuries in a sense, because you're working on these certain muscle groups in isolation or almost in isolation, whereas on a main lift, you're working everything at the same time, so you can't really break that single muscle group down and you don't know where the weaknesses are. So I think as far as that goes, you can do a ton more volume with the isolation and bodybuilding type work and it's going to decrease your decrease your chances of injury on the main lifts. So nowadays as I get older and you know guys I'm only 32, I'm not that old, but obviously it's a different ball game than when I was like 25 or even 20. So as I get older, I do more of this type of work because I just it doesn't break me down as much. It's not as taxing on my CNS, it's not as taxing on my muscle groups, on my joints, all that sort of stuff, and it just flat out works. So that's one other reason to do it. Um, and I think overall, it's just, it's fun. Like, are we not, let's not kid ourselves. I know it's fun to hit PRs and lift heavy weight, but at the same time, this type of training, getting a crazy pump, seeing your biceps grow, seeing your delts grow, seeing your pecs grow, all this sort of stuff, that's fun. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to be more jacked? I think we all do to a certain extent. That's kind of one of the things. And balancing out the bodybuilding work with strength is kind of the way to go because you're not going to be as mentally run down. You know, I knew over the course of my lifting career, it just became such a grind, always going heavy, always going into the gym, compound lifts, going as heavy as possible. It wore me down mentally and it wore my body down, obviously, over all these years. And I wish I could just go back and make a more balanced approach where it was maybe a little bit of the foundation, the base work with the main lifts, and then I did a lot more of this work. And I think it actually would have pro prolonged my career from not only a physical standpoint where my body would hold up better, but also mentally I just wouldn't be as taxed because this work just isn't that taxing. It's more fun. It's more enjoyable to kind of have the balance and the best of both worlds. So it's one thing to have the strength, but I also think it's another thing to have uh, somewhat of an intimidating look or an impressive physique. Like I think we all can find that middle ground and go with these sort of things. So I've kind of touched on it in the previous video where lateral raises are really my go-to right now. One of my main go-tos for upper body physique development in terms of getting the shoulder width and the shoulder separation. Uh, alternating dumbbell curls and barbell curls are really my go-to for biceps. Pushdowns are a classic for triceps because they're so easy to set up. They're not taxing. You can rep them out. You can do various rep ranges. Sometimes I'll do days of 10 heavier. Other days I'll do like 30 rep sets, things like that. And these have really been a huge thing for me as well. If we had a pec fly machine or a pec deck, I'd be all over those as well. But I feel like I can make up some of the chest development with dips, which I think are one of the best chest builders out there, if not the best period. Push-ups are also great. Don't overlook those. For back development, I'm big into pull downs. That's kind of my favorite right now. I'll switch it up where I do a close grip underhand version like this. And then one day I'll do a wider version, the wide grip pronated pull downs as well. That's kind of been my go-to as far as the back isolation movements. I really don't directly train traps because I don't want a huge neck and huge traps anymore. I already have quite a bit of neck development that's been pointed out over the years. So for me to try to grow those things is probably not a good idea if I want to avoid sleep apnea, and I really do. So I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Um, and you know, I never really did shrugs or direct trap training. It was all from deadlifts. Deadlifts are 100% what built the trap and neck development. For lower body, I feel like split squats target the quads and adductors the hardest, even more so than regular squats. Um, that's up for debate. You know, squats, back squats, they're also going to hit the legs pretty hard in a different manner. But I think Bulgarian split squats are really the number one thing for that quad development. And then lunges for glute development are going to be the way to go. That's, that's my opinion, the best isolation movement, way better than hip thrusts. I think hip thrusts are generally overrated as far as that goes. And hip thrusts are very overrated from a strength standpoint. As far as uh, low back and hamstring development, 100% deadlifts. Deadlifts are... People say they're the number one exercise you should do to build muscle. And, you know, to, they're not going to build a super aesthetic physique. Like, that's true. That's why a lot of bodybuilders forgo them. But they'll build a thick profile. So when you stand from a side view, they'll build that thickness, that width in your back. They'll build build the curved 
spinal erectors, they'll build the big traps, they'll build the big neck, they'll build the intimidating physique. So if you're after that, deadlifts are definitely the way to go, but they're not necessarily gonna build the most aesthetic physique. And then calves, forget about it. You know, that's one of those things you have to train almost every day to every other day if you really want good calf development. And I just, it's so genetic, it's so influenced by things like uh, um, the stuff they inject into their quads to grow them, synthol. That stuff plays such a role that I feel like in some regards, calves are like this fairy tale land of, of development. And I know somebody's gonna come in and say, I've grown my calves by doing calves every other day or every day, more power to you. I just don't wanna do that. I couldn't care less. But those are kind of the, the main exercises for each muscle group that I think work the best from a physique development. But really lean into the machine work, lean into the isolation work, it's gonna pay off. It's one of those things that will, will help you in many regards. Now, if you like this video or found it helpful, please subscribe and like the video. I will keep the content coming on this channel. That's what it's all gonna be about. It's gonna be about helping you guys. So appreciate it very much. If you're interested in coaching, shoot me an email at prstrength1 at gmail.com. I will put that link in the description. Check out my sponsor, Barbell Apparel. We got the Bighorn shirts, stuff like that. Check them out. Thanks, guys.